Perhaps one of the most weird and fascinating characters I met during my travels was the Rose Beetle Man. He had a fairy tale air about him that was impossible to resist, and I used to look forward eagerly to my meetings with him. I first saw him on a lonely road leading to one of the remote mountain villages. I could hear him long before I could see him, for he was playing a rippling tune on a shepherd's pipe, breaking off now and then to sing a few words in a curious nasal voice. He had a fox-like face with large eyes. His dress was fantastic. On his head was a hat with a wide, floppy brim. His shirt was warm. Around his neck dangled a cravat of startling blue satin. The pockets of his coat bulged, the contents almost spilling out. His patched trousers drooped over a pair of leather shoes with upturned toes. This extraordinary character carried on his back bamboo cages full of pigeons and young chickens and several mysterious sacks. With one hand he held his pipe to his mouth, in the other hand were held a number of lengths of cotton, to each of which was tied an almond-sized rose beetle, glittering golden green in the sun. All of them flying round his hat, trying to escape from the thread tied firmly around their waists. Occasionally, tired of circling round and round without success, one of the beetles would settle for a moment on his hat, before launching itself off once more on its endless merry-go-round. When he saw Roger, my pet dog, and me, the rose beetle man stopped, took off his ridiculous hat, and swept us a low bow. He smiled at us, put on his hat again, raised his hands and waggled his long bony fingers at me. I asked him if he had been to some fiesta. He nodded his head vigorously, raised his pipe to his lips and played a lilting tune on it, and then stopped and jerked his thumb over his shoulder, pointing back the way he had come. He smiled and rubbed his forefinger and thumb together, expressing that he wanted money. I suddenly realized that he must be unable to speak. So, standing in the middle of the road, I carried on a conversation with him, and he replied with a clever pantomime. I asked what the rose beetles were for. He held his hand out to denote small boys, took one of the lengths of cotton from which a beetle hung, and whirled it rapidly around his head. Immediately, the insect came to life and started on its planet-like circling. Pointing up at the sky, he stretched his arms out and gave a deep, nasal buzzing. Then he whirled his beetles around his head so that they all started to buzz quickly. Exhausted by his explanation, he sat down, played a short tune on his flute, breaking off to sing in his curious voice. They were not clear words, but a series of strange grunting. Presently, he stuffed his flute into his pocket and then swung a small sack off his shoulder. He undid it, and, to my astonishment, half a dozen tortoises tumbled out onto the dusty road. Their shells had been polished with oil, and he had decorated their front legs with little red bows. 